Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Today we're stitching circles in our nine patch block, and this can be a little tricky design. So let me give you a lot of tips and tricks on how to mark the blocks first, and how to quilt them in a variety of different ways. So hopefully you'll find the way that works best for you. Okay, so here's our quilting guide for this block, and you can see it's a lot of different circles, a lot of different sizes and shapes. If you're looking for this quilting guide, you can find it in the Building Blocks quilt pattern available at leahday.com. Okay, so how do we get these circles on this block? And we've got a lot of seam allowances in here. And circles can be really tricky um, when you're marking a circle and it doesn't kind of come out quite right. It can be very, very obvious. So how do we mark this in a way where we know that like these circles are exactly a two inch circle, these circles are exactly a one inch circle? Well, here's what I use. This is a little circle guide I picked up at the office supply store. You can pick this up Office Max, Staples, any of those places will have a drafting section and they will have these kinds of circle templates and they're a variety of different sizes. We've got everything from uh, two and a quarter inches to this looks like 21 64ths. I don't know I would ever use a circle that itsy bitsy tiny but we've got them here and they're nice to use and I collect these. I basically go to the office supply store pretty often and, and just check out what they've got and I pick them up no matter what size they are just because you never know you might be needing something really weird and every single template every single guide like this is broken down in a slightly different way so I think these are wonderful and they're really rigid plastic so they're nice and durable you can keep them for years and you can mark hundreds of quilts with them and it really helps you get this accurately set up accurately placed and a nice beautiful circle marked on your block and the other nice thing is this is marking on the surface of the block versus coming up from a trace box a tra uh, tracing box trying to shine light through the quilting guide and that can be really difficult with the seam allowances especially it can be just hard to see and so you're going to get a much nicer mark using the guide versus trying to mark this freehand. Of course, please don't feel any pressure to run out and go buy a template or guide like this from your office supply store. You can look around your sewing room, chances are you've got you know, spool of thread or, you know, coffee cup, something that will mark this and you can use it as a guide. Uh, cookie cutters are usually around two inches, so maybe that's some ideas for you to use. I'm also going to show you how to quilt these circles freehand and some marking that I put on the surface of the quilt in order to make that easier. So let's get on the quilt block and I can show you what that looks like step by step. So the first thing we're going to learn is how to quilt these circles and kind of flow through them so we have the least amount of travel stitching and you know it's really as easy as just you know kind of running your finger over it and trying to figure out a good method um, but you're also going to need to kind of pay attention to which angle you like to stitch circles for some people stitching clockwise so kind of swinging down and around is the be best method for some people, stitching the opposite direction, counterclockwise, works the best. You want to just kind of get the shape stitched as accurately as you can. Um, don't get obsessive with it. Circles are one of those things that can be kind of a bullseye on your quilt as far as if it's not done just right, it can be pretty obvious, but I wouldn't get too nitpicky with it. And certainly don't beat yourself up if your circles aren't perfect. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions on Facebook about circles and spirals and my best advice to you is simply to remember that you know the first four circles you stitch are probably going to be your worst ones. The first 10 are probably going to look pretty bad, uh, but the first 100, after you stitch it a hundred times, it's going to start feeling pretty comfortable. So it's one of those things, you know, if you have a little scrap sandwich, Go on ahead, you know, mark up a whole ton of circles and that way you'll be able to get a lot of practice, a lot of bang for your buck. Okay, I'm going to kind of wiggle my way down and that's the thing, once you get all of your circles stitched, you might have to do a little travel stitching along the edges just to get down to where you need to go for the next one. Just stitch slowly and carefully and you'll be able to do that just fine. Now we've got a bigger circle here, I'm going to swing out, I'm actually going to stitch this counterclockwise just to show you that. And I'm going to kind of stitch, travel stitch over just a bit so I can start my circle right on that edge and swing it down and around. 
sometimes I find that if I stitch it a little faster, it comes out a little better, but then, you know, right there, I couldn't see where I was going, and I ran right into that edge. I'm not going to obsess about it, but it is a little wobbly. <laughs> you know, I've got a little wobbly right there. That's okay. Not the end of the world. Okay, so another option is to not mark the circles at all, but instead mark kind of a guide for where they need to fit. So let me stitch down to here, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so I'm in this section, and I've already secured this block. I've already stitched it in the ditch, so I can pretty much travel stitch on any of these lines and be okay. Um, whenever you do this, if, you're, if you don't want to bother marking these circles, but you want to try and quilt them freehand, this is how I like to do it. First, I like to kind of break down the space, and know exactly you know, where the circle needs to fill. How big of a space does it have for the edges? But here's something even more important, and that is marking the center with just a little dot. That's your radius, that's your center point, so that oh, pretty much you can kind of use that and echo around it, and that might give you a better visual guide. So I'm going to kind of mark a little center dot in the middle of these little squares here and see if that helps me place these. I'm also going to stitch this clockwise. It's good to play with the direction that you swing out and around for your circles, just to see what works best for you. So, honestly, I think that this is working out a little bit better for me today. Is that to say that every single day my unmarked circles are going to look good? No. <laughs> it just might be that's what I'm getting away with today. So understand that there's a lot of different ways of stitching this. I'm going to kind of flow into these, just stitching down and around. And notice how I'm kind of forming figure eights as I stitch this. Of course, I have a decision right here. If I continue that figure eight and swing out, I'm really going to be kind of taking the long road around. I can instead just simply stitch back down and start that last circle down here. And I, you know, I'm all off the lines today. It's one of those things where your skill definitely changes today, day to day. Some days you're going to have um, a, an extreme ability to be able to do this and, and have no trouble at all. Some days you're going to stitch into it and it's just going to not work. Um, that's just how it goes sometimes. Let me give you a little cheat real quick, just in case you stitch something, you're about ready to tear it out. This is a good bit of advice. Just in case that happens to you, I'm going to stitch the middle. I'm going to show you a nice way of hiding mistakes. I'm going to fill these in. And let's say it's just really, really off. It's just not right. Go inside of it and stitch an open spiral. Just work your way in, work your way out swirl into the next one. Here's the reason why. For some reason, when a circle is empty, it can become a real bullseye when it's off. Like, this one's very obviously off. I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm going to leave it. I think it looks fine. And I think it's going to be a, a nice character <laughs> in my quilt. But if you're really, really nitpicky about it, and you've got one circle or two that are just really off, Fill them with the spiral and they will not be nearly as noticeable. Your eye will not catch that the outer circle shape is not quite right because the spiral has filled it completely. So that's it for stitching circles in our ninth hatch block. This is one of those designs that's going to require some practice. I'm not stitching it perfectly today, but I've shown you a way to hide your worst circles by stitching a little spiral inside of them. And, you know, just understand that this is going to be one of those blocks that might be kind of more of a focus on, on imperfection, uh, where those circles are kind of really obviously off. It's, it's very noticeable. It's not the end of the world. It's not going to stop your quilt from being a pretty quilt. And it's one of those things that I look at and go, hey, it adds a little bit more character. I think it's nice. So don't beat yourself up for it. And remember that your first five spirals are probably not going to look all that great. Your first 10, but your first 100, you know, get to 100. You know, take a little practice sandwich, mark it up uh, with circles or, you know, freehand all of them. It's entirely up to you, whatever feels most comfortable for you. I'd say there's, there really are two different skills. Filling a circle freehand 
which means have kind of a, a shape and a space to fill, and, and filling a circle on a marked line. Those are two very different skills, and they're both worth, worth building. So take your time, have some fun, and don't obsess about it if it's off. Mine's, not, mine's off, and I'm not going to obsess about it today. So I hope that that helps you not obsess about it either. So my name is Leah Day, and this has been a video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Pick up your copy of the Building Blocks Quilt Pattern and join us as we learn both piecing and free motion quilting this year. You can pick up your pattern at leahday.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.